Hey everybody, Doug here with uh, Doug Johnson Productions, Orem, Utah. Just wanted to spend a few minutes talking about the computer networking that's a part of my trailer project. I'm doing some fairly advanced stuff here, things that you wouldn't normally find in a video environment, but, but it's pretty, pretty unique and pretty interesting stuff. So I figured I'd take a few minutes and, and, and get into this. This video is going to be a little bit technical, so if you're not into that kind of thing, you might want to skip this one. But uh, if you have any interest in the technology associated with computer networks, uh, this might be an interesting video for you. So, start by taking a look up here at my, my main switch. This is a, what they call a layer 2 managed switch. Uh, it lets you do a lot of cool things that you don't get with a cheaper, like, consumer type of switch. Um, one of those features is something that we call a VLAN, or a virtual LAN, which allows you to divide up the ports on the switch into separate virtual networks. So, for example, you could have a virtual network that is your internet connection. Then we'll once have uh, one that's your com the computers on your network. And if you wanted to further subdivide it, you could. In this particular case, I'm dividing it up into uh, four inter four inter internet connection networks, uh, three private networks. Um, we got um, two or three ne uh, networks for audio. So when I decide to eventually move to uh, network-based audio. Those will be on their own networks as well. And there's a couple others, like some administrative stuff in there as well. And those networks are actually isolated from one another, so the traffic going in on a private network port is not seen on one of the internet ports. They're, they're totally isolated from one another, even though it is on one physical switch. And that's a technology that's called virtual LAN. Uh, the other thing I'm doing is I'm using virtual LAN technology, VLAN technology, over a trunk connection. So this uh, fiber cable here is in what I call a trunk port. And essentially what's going on there is a trunk allows me to send traffic for multiple VLANs over a single cable. And that's it. In this case, it's fiber, but you can also do that over, over uh, traditional Cat5 copper as well. And what that allows me to do is have all of these vir virtual networks on the switch here be accessible from elsewhere. So if we follow this yellow cable over to here, this is the breakout box that I use when I'm producing video out in the field. So we have the fiber connection coming in, fiber trunk connection coming in, and then this is also a layer two managed switch, and it breaks up those individual networks as well. So and we've got like an Internet 1, Internet 2, Internet 3. Again, those are, those are VLANs, so they're isolated from one another and from other traffic. But because I'm sending traffic over a trunk connection from my main switch in the trailer to this, traffic from Internet port 1 here is available on Internet port 1 over here. And the traffic flows over the trunk and allows me to do that. So. For example, when I'm producing a show, I'll use Internet 1 to connect to a facility's Internet connection. And so we can, do internet, we can do Internet streaming of video that way. And then Internet 2 is actually a Wi-Fi connection. So if we need to jump onto somebody's Wi-Fi, we can do that, do that on that Internet connection. And then Internet 3 is a cellular. So that's in the, the trailer cellular connection. So three separate Internet connections that are completely isolated from one another. And uh, that gives me gives some redundance. Um, the other piece of gear that I wanted to show off here, this little guy, I haven't wired it in yet, but this is called Edge Router X from Ubiquity Networks. This is a very powerful little little router. Uh, e each of the five ports can be configured in any different number of any number of different ways. The way I've actually got it configured is for four separate internet connections and internally it switches from one connection to the next uh, based on availability. So, for example, we'll put the, uh, the local facilities network on port zero. If that goes up, then it goes, up, goes down, then it automatically fails over to port one, which is where we go to a Wi-Fi connection. If that goes down, then we fail over to cellular, and that all happens completely automatically. And so we're not having to manage multiple internet connections if uh, manually. It's like, so if one of the connections goes down, 
that, that router just automatically fails over to the next available connection. So uh, I've currently got it configured for three, but it, it can handle four simultaneous internet connections. Um, went through just a little, little bit of configuration. So um, all of the networking gear here is uh, gigabit, although at some point down the future, if we find that we need more bandwidth, I could easily swap that out and do 10 gig networking, uh, especially for the, like the trunk, because the trunk connection can carry traffic from any number of these, these virtual networks. Um, so we can do 10 gig over fiber, for example, and run that to the breakout box and have 10 gigabit, gigabits of, of bandwidth if, if we need to do that. Um, but even with networked audio, you, one, gig, one gigabit is still quite a bit. You can run 100 and some odd channels over, over a gigabit connection. So um, anyway, so things are moving along here. Uh, the networking is pretty cool. Oh, the other interesting thing I've done here, um, these two connections here go to the server. And they're in what we call a WAG, which is a link aggregation group. Um, so basically, I'm able to combine the bandwidth of two ports to go to one computer. So effectively, two one gigabit connections combined gives me two gigabits of bandwidth to the server. So if, if we're moving a lot of media files around between computers in the trailer, uh, we can share, we can have up to two gigabits of, of bandwidth at the server itself. So one gigabit could be going to one computer and one gigabit could be going to another computer and that's all handled automatically. So if you had four connections, it would be half a gigabit to each of the four and so forth. So uh, that's, that's something you can also do with the managed switch. So um, one other thing that I've done here, uh, some of the more astute among you maybe have even noticed this, but my fiber connection, I'm so, it's only using one fiber. Like normally with fiber, you have two connections, one for outgoing, one for incoming. Um, I found these SFPs on the internet that only have a single single port, and what they do is they they use two different uh, w wavelengths of light, one for sending and one for receiving, and so you operate these in pairs. And one, some of them are blue, some of them are yellow. I use blue for upstream, yellow for downstream, but because it's using two different wavelengths, you can actually send uh, data in two directions at once. So that's another fun little thing. Uh, and that's especially important because when I'm shooting stuff out in the field, my fiber trunk only has 12 lines on it. Uh, so I need to conserve those as much as possible. So this is a great way to do that. Um, through that and if I need additional bandwidth before jumping to 10 gigabit, I could actually do a lag or link aggregation group with and run two fiber cables and get two gigabits that way. So there's a lot of cool things you can do with these, uh, these, these managed switches that a standard off-the-shelf switch can't necessarily do. And uh, the nice cool thing is these, these aren't even that incredibly expensive. I, I think this guy, which has 52 ports, was about 250 bucks. So not too bad for all the capabilities that it has. So anyway, do you have any questions, Dave? Dave's manning the camera for me. Why does this look like Star Wars? <laughs> Why is it like Star Wars? <laughs> because Star Wars is cool. <laughs> Hence, this is cool. Hence, this is cool, yes. So. Oh, yeah. So, anyway, that's kind of where we stand. Um, you can see that I've got a lot of this stuff actually installed now. Uh, most of the networking has not been completed, so I go, a lot of these ports haven't been connected on the backside yet, but we are moving along, so. Um, sh I should have most of the networking done for too long. Um, there is power to all these devices, so I can power those up and have them run. And they do work, but uh, they're, they're waiting for their video connections at this point. So that'll, that's going to be my focus this week, is getting all, the, getting all those connections done so that the equipment is actually functional. So... Um, but you can, you, you, also, you can also see here that uh, the equipment's actually installed. And uh, so this, this is how it works. So this stuff slides out from the back. So if I get to a facility where the trailer just isn't going to work for one, re one reason or another, 
You can slide this stuff out the back and take it inside and use it just like I, I traditionally have. So equipment from here down is removable and the equipment from here up is permanent, but unnecessary for most, most types of shows. And uh, so. the course of security devices, you have to disarm and all these things before sliding them out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Security, security's top priority. So, um, anyway, um, I think that's about it for now. Um, things are continuing to move ahead. Uh, I did get quite a bit done this weekend. You can see they've got shelves painted. Um, as of right now, this is the same color as the carpet. I actually took a sample of the carpet in and had the paint and matched the color for the paint. So that should blend in really well. Um, but uh, yeah, things are continuing to move along. Um, if you have questions or comments, be sure and leave those down below. Uh, I do try and answer the, uh, those as much as possible. And uh, also be sure and like and subscribe. So uh, that's all for now. Thanks for watching.